Frogs and toads are my favorite animals on the planet, but they're in trouble, so I decided to dedicate a YouTube channel focusing on the conservation of these animals. I'll present to you the educational and entertaining aspects of their lives. Well guys, we delivered all the promise that we were going to find the great tree frog. Frog Week is dedicated to the animals of the Northeast and their story. This is my conservation efforts. Welcome to Frog Week. So they're calling, they're calling down here. Um, I think we're gonna have to get on through the woods because I don't know if this is somebody's yard. I don't think it is, but I don't wanna keep shining the light. So we're gonna have to go down. We're gonna have to head back. I just, want, just wanted to see. One of the best ways to find an eastern gray tree frog is to draw it out of hiding whenever you actually use the mating call. So that's what I've been doing here. I'm trying to track the gray tree frog with its own mating call to see if I'll get one to respond. Do you want to go out on the road or do you want to keep going this way? It's up to you. Whatever you think. Let's, let's try and go back on the road. Getting an eastern gray tree frog to respond to your call isn't always the easiest thing, especially in a place where they've never been found before. We have the lights off because for whatever reason we found that eastern gray tree frogs are very sensitive to flashlights, so whenever they see them, they're usually very quiet. So whenever we turn the lights off like this, it makes them feel a little bit more confident and they begin calling again. And that's the strategy I was hoping here to locate and track one of the animals that I'd been calling in. I remember in this moment how disappointed I felt because I had to be up for work at 6 a.m. and it was already going on midnight so we had to draw the adventure to a close and we would have to wrap it up and hope that we could find the eastern gray tree frog again on another night. Well guys we didn't come up with any great tree frogs in hand, but we were able to get them calling. So even though it feels like we came away 
uh, shorthanded just because we didn't hold any, we didn't have any to present. We did discover something and we found something very, uh, sorry, we found something very significant because in 2,000 feet of elevation, these great tree frogs are the first that I am aware of in the state to be calling at such high elevation. So that opens the door for a lot of different questions that I've had um, about these frogs. You know, can they withstand higher elevations and, you know, do the hills and the ridges matter? And finding uh, the evidence that we did tonight of hearing multiple gray tree frogs calling just past the peak of breeding season, it makes you think that maybe uh, these gray tree frogs are not affected by the weather, but more so that they were affected by the deforestation. Um, right now we're at a landmine. Um, we're at a old acid mine drainage treatment and a lot of different stuff that went down here. So I would assume that um, in a lot of places where there could be gray tree frogs, they must have lost their land because that it was deforested. So we want to make sure that we come back here, even though we're running out of time. We want to make sure we come back here, even though we're running out of time. Uh, the breeding season is quickly fleeting and the great tree frogs aren't going to be calling quite as much unless we have rainy nights like tonight. So uh, we're in a race against time to actually come up with a specimen, but we do have their voice on audio in a couple of different places and you'll be able to hear that uh, throughout this video. So we'll check in with you guys later if we can get our hands on one, but for tonight at least we're going to call it a night, but thank you guys. Just whenever we thought all hope was going to be lost to actually show you a physical specimen, I got a call from Jeff and he told me that he found the gray tree frogs calling, but in a different location. So with this being one of the last opportunities, I made sure I gave it everything that I had to make sure I find one of these frogs. Since I wasn't having any success, I decided to try the tactic of turning the lights off again to see if I'd get a response, and to my surprise and delight, of course another eastern gray tree frog got riled up and started calling back. This was going to be the opportunity that I was waiting for to finally capture one of these frogs in Somerset County on video and present it to you guys. After getting a couple responses from using my Bluetooth speaker, I remember I was just going crazy and my heart was beating and pounding out of my chest and I was wondering, am I ever going to find this frog? And it's right beside it. It's right beside it. Oh my God. Jeff, are you here? Hey Jeff. We got one. How did I just set it down right next? To... We got one. This is the second discovery of the gray tree frog, but this isn't in Cambria County. We've got it in Somerset County. So we have undisputable proof. I've got two witnesses here and we've also got the frog right here. Unbelievable guys. We have it. My Bluetooth speaker, as I was calling, it was drawing one of these frogs out. And I don't know where this frog came from, and I didn't see it when I set my speaker down. So I don't know if it came to my speaker, or if, you know, I just had the, I don't know, maybe I hit the lottery and set it down right next to the frog, and it 
got the frog irritated, so it started to call back. I was down looking in ponds, I was looking in the woods, and little did I know, all I had to do was just turn around and it would be right there. So Maria actually spotted it first, but we heard it calling in here, so I'm glad one of us found it. But here we are, guys, the eastern gray tree frog in a new place where it's never been, fo never been found. So I'm super excited. We're going to do a live video on Facebook. Just the fact that we found this animal, nobody apparently was looking for it, or if they were, they just weren't able to find it. They're a tricky animal to find. You're either looking up in trees or you're looking in the wrong places. And their call, it seems like it's right before the sun sets. So most people wouldn't expect to see a frog when the sun is setting. Usually they come out at night. So truly incredible animal here. I didn't think it could be right beside the speaker. I was like, there's no way. And then I just, <laughs> it, it sounded like it was almost like right in here. Isn't this crazy? Just whenever people aren't looking for something, it always seems to be the time when you find it. That was our live video, it just ended. Guys, it was a sweaty day, sweaty adventure, and I've been looking for this animal for a little while. I'm gonna do another live video of it. Isn't this a beautiful frog? Reminds you of Bane and Meredith and Dante and all the pals that we have at home. You know that, buddy? But don't you worry because you're a, you're a wild one. We're gonna do live video round two, maybe. He's looking right at the camera. It's like this guy perfectly planned this. He's a celebrity because he's the first found gray tree frog and we have him calling. I don't know if he's gonna call on my hand like the last one did, but these guys have been calling here um, in a couple of different locations. And it's nice to finally get our hands on one and to really prove not only did we hear the call, but now we have a physical specimen. We're not going to take this guy. You don't have to worry. This is his home. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure it's protected. Even though this isn't a protected species, it's not listed as abundant. Which means... Oh, hold on. I got a mosquito trying to eat me. Mr. Frog, why didn't you do something? But anyway, the gray tree frog is not listed as abundant, which means it's not statewide. Now it could be with the work that we're doing, that's why this is very important, we could get this frog on the map as being an abundant species. Whether that's a good thing or not, you know, that's a different thing for us to answer for another live video. But for now, see, he wants protected. He's a celebrity, look at this guy. This is what these moments are all about. This is a discovery, loud and clear. This is awesome. Frogs, frogs are my favorite. And he seconds that. That was good and ended on that. Jeff, this is like one of the most tremendous discoveries in Somerset County in recent history. We found a frog that nobody, nobody thought would exist here. I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad we were able to find it. Today I came out to the site just to check on construction, see how things were going. And they started calling around 8.30, quarter of the nine. So that's when I gave you the, the text and said, yeah, here it is, a new new site that we didn't know it was at. And there you go, now you have one in your hand. We've been tracking these guys all month and it didn't take us horribly long, but just the fact that we've got this animal here and you know, explain to the viewers, you know, you guys are out here treating the site to give it clean water so it would be able to breed and it would be able to live here. So this site is, uh, it's a treatment system to treat acid mine drainage that's polluting a local stream. Um, hopefully in the next two to three years, we'll have the habitat back, we'll have the wildlife back, and the fish will start coming back. So we'll have you know, four miles of fishable stream back that has been lost for hundreds of years. Yeah, and this could be a tremendous breakthrough for this species because they're only in small pockets. So what that can mean for this guy, not this year, but in the next coming years, um, he could pass on his genes to a growing population because not just treating these ponds. Oh, he likes that. As we're, as we're treating the streams, uh, there's going to be areas that they're going to be able to breed on the shallow edges and they're going to have chances to spread out. They couldn't spread out probably because of the pollution. And now that we're, we're treating this area, you know, it's interesting. These guys have come to a clean water source. They're not out in the forest where the water is dead because it's so bad. They're here in a living environment. And that was provided, even though you know mankind, we made this problem, 
we got guys out here, we got organizations that are fixing it, and we can see from the hard work that they've been doing, we have a frog that comes from the forest to take refuge here and breed. These guys are trying to breed. So this could be one of the most significant places in this county because we could have an established population of gray tree frogs. It's like I'm timing this right now. So let his voice speak loud and clear because the work that these organizations do, it does not go to waste. It doesn't just go by the wayside. These frogs are proof. Go ahead. And uh, it's just unbelievable that we found this. We found others too, but we've got a living specimen here. This is proof. The gray tree frog could be on its way to becoming an established species in the entire state, but it had to start with Cambria, and we had to find it in Somerset. So this guy is, a, he's a historical find, and he's singing his heart out for you. So when they look for him in the history books, we're gonna have his call and his picture. So, unbelievable find, guys. This is what Frog Week is all about. Right here. <laughs> you wanna hold it? So hold out your hand like this, and we'll let him. Finally, some success. Moments like tonight are what make Frog Week a true conservation project, regardless on if you're a citizen scientist or if you're a biologist employed by the state. It's an incredible find whenever you can discover a species that's never been documented in a county, especially for how big and how old and historic Pennsylvania is. We hope to see you in the last episode, the finale for Frog Week. Please like and subscribe and share this with your friends, and we'll see you in the last video tomorrow.